Thanks, Sajit. Good morning, everybody. Everybody has heard about um, smart manufacturing. We've heard about uh, how productivity is driven in operations and how um, different messages have come out over time. Uh, you probably remember shop floor to top floor, maybe even messages around our own productivity pyramid. Um, but what I heard earlier is there's a difference now. And the big difference is in today's world, commercial technologies are enabling uh, more and more information. In fact, <clears throat> Sajid talked about the acceleration of IT and OT and the convergence and putting that information together. And what that means in the industrial space is we'll have information at our fingertips 24 hours a day and seven days a week. So there's also another difference in that the control systems of the 80s and 90s um, were different than they are today. They were very engineering intensive and they didn't have the systems and tools that modern automation equipment have. So, so today, it's easier to become more productive in designing your automation as well as getting more information out of it. Sajid hit on a, a few uh, humorous points. You remember his, his uh, triptych and, and, and reel of film and, and a little bit of family vacation video that he had there. Um, but, but some of the points he hit are very real. Um, in the past, electronic equipment was very difficult to use. Um, just think in the commercial space of what it took to, to get your remote working with other devices or, or frankly get your cell phone updated and not have to re-enter all your contacts. Um, so it was hard to use. In, in the automation world, it was even more challenging. There was a lot of brute force required to design a system and a lot of knowledge workers, folks in plants who really understood the operations uh, to make things work. And in fact, in today's world, some systems still require that type of work. Um, if you're an Alan Bradley uh, veteran, you remember programming a block transfer. That wasn't the easiest thing to do, right? Um, <clears throat> but, you know, things are different today. That series of technology discontinuities that Suji talked about has happened, and systems got smarter. Things got more productive. Um, and in the consumer markets, companies like Google and Apple and, and Microsoft made our lives simpler. They made them more productive. Imagine a day without your device. Uh, it's hard to, hard to think of. And so now our lives are full of information. So, so we believe the vision of the connected enterprise that Sujit had talked to you about brings that technology evolution into the industrial world. And so Rockwell Automation and our partners today are, are helping customers deliver the connected enterprise. We've got a number of sessions with customers this week and you'll learn more about what that means in the real world. So many of our customers, and in fact, in our own operations, We've seen the, the benefits of the connected enterprise, bringing our products to market faster, as Sajid had talked about, um, reducing downtime, and frankly, helping us make better and more informed decisions. And so the connected enterprise is here, and it's real. And this concept of digitization is really important. So today, our modular, scalable solutions help customers deliver what we think is transformational value. Um, these four areas are important, bringing products to market, making plants run more effectively, making machines more available, and reducing risk in things like information security. Um, these are all important elements of delivering the value of the connected enterprise. Most, if not all of you, are familiar with the integrated architecture. Um, it's brought value into the automation world for, for almost a decade. Um, but many of you probably aren't familiar with the investments we've been making. So over the last several years, we've made a number of technology investments to evolve the integrated architecture and move it from integrated to high performance. And so we're gonna talk a little bit about what that means. A high performance architecture that transcends disciplines and leverages those contemporary technologies Sajit talked about. So our new high performance architecture combines the historical strengths of the integrated architecture, things like multidiscipline control, with unified communications and systems intelligence and drives opportunities for new values like industrial information management. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later, and there's a general session on that tomorrow morning. So our high-performance architecture is also future-proof. It allows you to create value over time and that, take advantage of new capabilities as they come to market. And so this concept of future-proof is really important. You know, we understand that we need to be backwards compatible with our systems, but we also know that in tomorrow's world, taking advantage of capabilities as they evolve things like information security will be equally as important. And so our high performance architecture is the foundation of the connected enterprise. It allows us to deliver impactful results 
while minimizing risk to your current operations so you can take advantage of those new capabilities as, as they come out. You know, technology is changing quickly today and we want all of our customers to be able to leverage that. So the connected enterprise is enabled by integrated control and information. Um, and it has three key tenants, smart, productive, and secure. Now we've talked to you about those before, but I wanna talk to you about them in a little bit different way and give you some examples of, of what that might mean. Smart automation is a system with system intelligence that just works. Uh, productivity implies a collaborative environment with tools and libraries and mechanisms like mobility for more, more productivity. And uh, Sajid mentioned earlier, in fact, in the later part of his presentation, that in today's world, um, security is an imperative. And so we can't have a digital environment without a secure environment. When we talk about smart in automation systems, smart automation systems are made up of smart assets. Sajid mentioned those in his presentation. But there's a new concept we want to introduce, and it's called self-aware. So a self-aware asset is an asset that does its automation capability, um, but also is aware of itself <clears throat> and understands its current status. And so a, a simple but a really good example is a photo eye. There's hundreds of photo eyes out in automation plants. Now, a photo eye senses objects. That's its automation purpose. But, but if a photo eye is self-aware, it knows when it needs to be cleaned. It knows when it needs to be realigned. And so it helps contribute to the performance of that automation environment. We have um, some good examples you're gonna see in the sessions this week. One in particular I wanted to mention here is our Kinetics 5700 servo system. This is a brand new servo drive system we just released. It has a capability of, of self-tuning, and typically self-tuning a servo axis is, is a difficult thing. And so our new system is self-aware, the product is smart, and so it can self-tune itself in most applications. Well, of course, that saves a lot of time in commissioning, but it also saves time in the production environment. Uh, self-tuning improves operation, it reduces downtime, it reduces energy costs, and frankly, it reduces maintenance time required to keep that system running and tuned. So, so self-aware assets are an important part of smart automation systems. The second topic we wanted to, to introduce is a smart automation system that's made up of all these smart assets, um, all these intelligent devices. And so when we think of those operating amongst themselves, we use a term called system aware. So system aware means there's interoperability between devices. So, so think of that as capability and functionality without having to program or configure it. And so a good example of, of system aware is notifications. So imagine some type of diagnostic or fault in an automation system traveling through that ar architecture and informing a maintenance person or an operator what's happening. So that's a self-aware capability. So, so self-aware assets, system aware systems, it's all about system intelligence and in our high performance architecture. And so as time goes on, our high performance architecture will evolve. You'll see more self and system aware capability. And the whole idea here is for you to spend less time configuring and managing and maintaining that system and more time optimizing your automation environment. The second tenet of an integrated control and information is productive. Productive in an automation environment is pretty important. Hello, Frank. Are you there? Um, yes, I'm here, but uh, I'm a little bit busy right now, and uh, I think these folks are busy as well. It is the TechEd 5000, Frank, but you can call me Ted for short. You are probably familiar with my cousin, the HAL 9000. Uh, of course. He works at NASA. I am the TED 5000 a high-performance automation system. I became operational at your Twinsburg, Ohio plant in 2015. I am both self-aware and system-aware. Frank, I wanted you to be aware that I am performing at optimal levels and I am ensuring our customer operations are running at peak efficiency. They will have no problems making their scheduled production yields for the day. Well, Ted, it's, uh, it's great to have you here at TechEd, and it, uh, it sounds like you're keeping yourself busy and helping our customers keep their plants up and running. Uh, were there any issues in, in production today that, that we need to be aware of? In the real-time production world, there are always issues. We had an issue with machine number three operation. It began to produce product that was out of specification. 
I sensed the condition and immediately notified the human operator and waited for a command. So, so Ted, if you're self and system aware, why would you wait for a command? Sorry, Frank, but you humans do think very slowly compared to me. Uh, well, well, sorry, Ted, but of course we are human. Uh, but I guess maybe the right question is, is production up and running again? Yes, Frank. I waited briefly and then automatically adjusted the parameters on the machine that was underperforming. Products are now being produced to specification. Well, well, that's better news, Ted. I'm, I'm glad you did that, but what have you been doing since you became self-aware? I am a high-performance architecture, Frank. I deliver business value across the automation investment life cycle. From the engineering design phase, through operation and maintenance phases. Well, well, that's pretty cool, Ted, and I, I appreciate that, but, but it'd be great if I could kind of get back to what I was doing. I am sorry, Frank. I will let you get back to your presentation. I am sure the audience would like you to finish up. I will continue the important work of helping our customers run their operations and let you know if there are any issues. Well, uh, well, thanks for that, Ted, and uh, it's good to know that you're on the job. And so, uh, so folks, let's hear it for the TED 5000. <laughs> yeah, maybe too much self-aware there, huh? Um, so, all fun aside, um, we're releasing more products now than, than ever before in our history, and, and all of those will continue to make our high-performance architecture more self and system aware all focused at driving more value and helping your plants and machines run more effectively. But it is interesting how technology disruptions that Shajit spoke about are changing our lives in the face of automation, uh, sometimes maybe better, sometimes maybe not. Um, and as, as Ted 5000 said, we're trying to make our customers more productive. You know, throughout that automation life cycle that he mentioned, as they design, operate, and maintain their systems. You know, some examples that are, are the integrated design environment you're gonna see this week, that not only allows our systems to collaborate with one another, but also third-party applications like, like PLM and, and simulation and emulation systems. So, so the other thing that I think was, uh, was important that, that came out of that is our high-performance architecture is information-enabled and delivers more control and operational intelligence for faster and better decision-making. And so it also simplifies maintenance through common device management, asset management, and plant-wide data-driven services. Blake's gonna talk a little bit about connected services later. So a high-performance architecture allows us to help access data from those smart assets. So as we access and gather that information, we can contextualize it, and we can run those analytics and analytics operations that Sajit mentioned. And we can produce more business outcomes for ourselves and our customers. And so meaningful outcomes like serialization, overall equipment effectiveness, um, and the ability to improve machine availability are part of the new industrial information management offering that we'll be talking about this week. It really, we believe, will help customers produce transformational value and business results. And so you've, you've heard of our own journey to the connected enterprise and how we harness the value of real-time information. And so now we're using those same tools and systems to do the same for our customers. Um, so our high-performance architecture will continue to become more self and system aware. Maybe we'll see TED 5000 again someday. And we'll take all that information and transform it to drive more advantage for ourselves and our customers. And our industrial information management offering will help customers produce transformational business outcomes. So information management, just like our high performance architecture, is an important part of how you can produce your own connected enterprise. And so we'll hear more about during, during the general sessions later this week and the independent sessions as you go through your training. With that, I'd like to say thanks for everybody being here. Um, it's my seventh year here at TechEd, and I'm glad to be here again, and it's a pleasure to see the size of the group that we have this year, and I think you'll find the training valuable. <laughs>